Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are going to be doing a painting of lilies, a small bee, a backyard fence, um, and some lavender. So uh, I'm going to kind of explain what everything is, what our setup looks like, and then we'll dive right into the painting. Um, this will be a two-parter. It'll give you a chance to take kind of a break um, and then we'll uh, have the second part afterwards. Okay, so let me explain my paper. So I'm not using a canvas for this. I'm just using a paper. Uh, you can use a canvas, you can use whatever you want. Um, if you are using paper, I highly recommend that you tape it down using some form of painter's tape or less sticky tape. Um, it gives you a really nice border around it in case you wanna frame it or mat it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm measuring my tape. And since you don't want this to rip your paper later on, I like to stick it on some form of clothing so it picks up those fibers, those hairs. I don't know about you guys, but I have pets, so it picks up some pet hairs along the way um, and just genuinely makes it less sticky um, so that it comes off more easily. I'm just cleaning off my work surface, making sure everything's happy and where it's supposed to be. Okay, so I have it taped down. Um, I won't take this tape off until the entire painting's finished. Um, and again, that way it'll keep my work surface clean and it keeps, it gives it a nice crisp edge and keeps it flat so it doesn't roll up since it is paper. Okay, so um, I have my painting kind of in the middle. Uh, you always want to put your paints and your water cup uh, and your paper towel um, off to the side that you write with. So I'm right-handed, so I want to put it on the right side. If I were left-handed, I'd want to put it on the left side. And yes, I broke my pinky. Long story. Anyway, so let's keep going. Um, I've got two piles of white, so we're going to have a lighter version to make our backyard fence area and a medium. And then down here, I just have the primary colors of red, yellow, and blue in about equal parts. And that'll be used to make our brownish mauve color. That'll be the base for our background. And I'll post a picture of that in just a little bit. Okay, um, continuing on with our setup, for the purpose of this video, we're going to use three different paintbrushes. Uh, I tend to like a large flat paintbrush, a medium round, and then a smaller detail brush. Um, for today in this part, we're going to focus on the large flat brush to, in order to do our background. Okay, so one of the things I like to do with, so we're going to go ahead and get started with that painting. One of the things I like to do is take my paintbrush and just hydrate it a little bit. So I'm just trying to get some water into it. Um, I find that it allows the paint to kind of mix more easily. And I'm just using a sheet of paper as a paint palette and nothing fancy is necessary. Um, you can use a paper plate, you can use a paper towel. Paper towel can a little bit absorbent, so paper plate or a piece of paper works really nicely. Um, or if you have a paint palette, that also works. All right, so let's go ahead and mix our brown. So when you mix primary colors together, they create brown. Um, but you have to be careful with blue. Um, blue can be really overpowering in that brown. So I'm going about equal parts of my red and my yellow, and then I'm going to go about half the amount of the blue to make that brown. So I'm just mixing it together. Um, notice I'm not trying to paint my paper. Um, you know, you, you'll lose a lot of that, that um, paint and that pigment that you're working so hard to create if you just wind up kind of spreading it all over the place. And I have these in separate chunks so that I don't have to worry about... Um, Really making sure that I can my camera. There we go. Um, so anyway, I have them separated out so that they'll not get used for anything else. They're just getting used to make my brownish color. So I'm a little bit dark. I told you that again. That blue can be very, very potent. So I'm bringing in some yellow to kind of help lighten it up. And again, you're not going for like a true brown. You're going for almost like a mauvey brownish color. So I'm pleased with that. And then up here we have our two piles of white. So for the background fence, you're going to need a medium light um, brownish mauve color and then a very light one. So I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. And then I'm going to use basically what's on my paintbrush here to make my medium tone. Um, if you're using a canvas, just kind of be aware that it's going to take more paint. Um, since I'm using a small sheet of paper, uh, it, I'm using relatively small amounts of paint. But you really want to try to not have to mix the color again, because almost every time you're going to mix a color, you're going to it's going to change in some way. 
might be a little bit more yellow or a little bit more blue this time or a little bit more red even. So I'm just picking up that color and kind of trying to make a medium light tone. Pretty pleased with that. Good to get some more of it. And we do want to leave some of that dark original color that'll help us out later as well. Mixing that for my lighter color. Okay. And then notice that I kind of twist my paintbrush to get some of that extra paint off. Because again, I don't want to waste it and I'm not trying to paint a large section um, of my picture or of my like palette. I'm just trying to keep it in kind of a confined area. Okay, so since we're doing um, kind of like a fence background, um, you're going to have kind of a linear up and down motion that you're applying this paint. And notice I haven't washed my paintbrush. I'm just going to keep going with what I've got. I've got plenty of paintbrush or paint on my paintbrush. And I'm kind of pulling up from the bottom or I'm pulling down with my paint. And I'm saying I'm pulling because I'm literally pulling and pushing the paint around. You're going to layer some of the light stuff on there, some of the dark in there. And you're just trying to really mix it around. Um, this is going to be a very free form kind of painterly quality. If you get it on your table, just wipe it up. It's not a big deal. Um, if you're using a canvas, I highly recommend painting your edges before you paint anything else. Uh, also, if you're using a canvas, you're going to want to make sure that you're painting in um, all of those little holes that are on your canvas. Um, they do not suddenly get filled in just because you walk away. That more actually, in my experience, show up when you walk away because it kind of, the paint has a chance to settle. So again, I'm just pulling from the top, pushing from the bottom to really get this paint applied in a vertical or linear fashion. And um, lots of brush strokes are really fun in this, so don't feel like you have to make it super smooth and perfect. So bring your light, bring your dark. Just kind of have fun with it. We're not really worried about highlights and shadows right here. We're just kind of trying to get that face. Make sure it's all the way painted onto your edges. Nothing worse than seeing when you're done having a little corner that's white that you kind of missed. Um, okay, so that's kind of the beginning of it. Um, so now I'm going to take a little bit more blue in my paint and I'm going to mix it into just a little bit of that dark mauvey brown that we made and I'm going to make four lines. These are lines are going to represent the edge of the pad or the edge of the um, each wood panel uh, in the fence and since my paint's pretty wet right now sometimes it doesn't really go on it just kind of skids across and if that's happening to you you have two options you can either just kind of go on with a heavier hand of that paint um, or you can give it a chance to dry. Um, sometimes even washing your paintbrush can be helpful in that instance. So I'm just making four lines. Mine's, mine are pretty blue right now, but I can come back and fix those. Or I can leave them like that. Whichever one makes me happy. I'll come back and do this line once it's a little bit drier. <clears throat> And then we're going to start to add that wood texture. So I'm going to go ahead and wash my paintbrush out for that. So I'm really pushing that paintbrush against the bottom of the cup. And then I'm going to wipe it off on the sides. Blot it off just a little bit. It doesn't have to be super, super dry. And then you're ready to go. So taking this, not even changing paintbrushes, just using that dark brown again. And I'm going to start to make some organic kind of curls and lines, just thinking about what the knots are and what they look like on wood. So adding some of them, maybe you're just adding some more vertical lines, maybe you're adding kind of like a peacock feather or oval, maybe you're doing longer, almost like sixes, so just kind of having fun with it. You can do it with your darker color, you can do it with your lighter color. Um, just realize that this bottom area, so this basically this bottom whole section, um, will get covered with flowers and, um, and leaves. So it doesn't have to be perfect. 
So when you're ready, you can add some of your other colors in, really show in that texture. And pretty much you're done whenever you're done. So if you like the texture that you have, perfect, don't add any more. If you want to add more texture, if you want it to look different, just play around with it. Play around with the paper, play around with the paint until you're happy. One of the best things about paint is that if you don't like it, let it dry and paint over it. It's really not a big deal. Um, it's really easy to fix things. Uh, sometimes the easiest thing is to just stop and take a break uh, and then to come back when you're in a different mindset or when things have had a chance to dry. Sometimes having a chance to dry really helps. So like I really have this bright white so I'm just going to kind of pull it up so it's not as stark against the background. I'm also trying to use the lighter paint in some of the darker areas and I'll try to pull some of my darker paint into my lighter areas so it really shows up. All right, so this is where we're going to stop here. Um, this definitely needs a chance to dry. Make sure that you leave your paintbrush um, clean when you leave your workstation to dry. Um, and you always want to make sure that your paintbrush is, again, totally clean. Um, so I'll wash this out in the sink to so make sure I get everything off of the ferrule. Um, and then you need to make sure you, you store it upright. So upright or flat is fine, but down in the water, it'll bend the bristles. All right, everybody. I hope you have a great day and enjoy painting. See you soon.